Well, Casey here with CL Creative, where I'm teaching you web design and Webflow one video at a time. And today we're going to talk about how do you create box shadows inside of your Webflow project that exactly match the box shadows inside of Figma without having to fool around with the Webflow's box shadow deal and, and try to make them match by just looking at it. I'm talking a one-to-one -one correlation. Let's jump into the computer and we'll figure this out together. And so here we are in the computer. And one of the things that, you know, oftentimes happens is you, you get a, um, you know, a design system kit, like I work with Reloom's design system kit or, you know, Untitled UIs, or there's a number of different ones that, that I have that I work with. And these are awesome. They're fast. They allow you to build things really quickly. And they give you a lot of different options as you are designing. And some of the options they provide are, are box shadows. And they've spent quite a bit of time refining the way the box shadow should look. Or maybe you get a file from a designer and you need to develop this out in Webflow and you need it to look exactly the same and they've spent a lot of time coming up with how, exactly how they want the box shadows to look and they don't want you to mess that up and so how do you create a box shadow that looks exactly the same well here's an easy way to do that using just a little bit of custom code in webflow so the first thing i do is i'm inside of my project here in web in <laughs> figma uh, i'm going to right click well i'm going to select down to my image and you notice it has a box shadow it's a small box shadow i want to replicate this box shadow one to one i'm going to click right click i'm going to say copy and paste copy as code i'm going to click and choose css i often have you know some other document that's open that i can paste this inside of because you're going to notice that there's going to be a number of different um, you know css declarations here that, that you can pick and i'm just going to click the box shadow i'm going to copy that and you notice it gives us all of the values exactly as it shows up inside of figma now the problem is if you come over here to webflow and say you want to put a box shadow on this image right here and you click on this box shadow box it has all of these different values and they don't necessarily match the values inside of figma so i'm going to delete that what I do is I take and I put a global styles embed on my page. So I have my HTML embed. I put this on every single page of my, oops, excuse me. I put this on every single page of my project. And you notice that I already have a number of different box shadows in here. But for our particular purposes here, let me show you how I create this. And so what I'm going to use, and, and, and you could just set up a class like I've done here, box shadow medium, and then you just paste that in but we're actually going to use this class attribute selector here this becomes pretty powerful particularly when you have a bunch of different uh, classes stacked inside of webflow in order to get back to say the box shadow um, you have to take off the classes that you have stacked on top of that and that can get a bit annoying or if like me a lot of times what i will do is is i will set up my project so that you know, say I have two columns and it's a grid. I, I'm a, I name that to begin with. I create a component out of that and I reuse that over and over and over. And within that two column grid that I'm using, I typically have an image that's associated with that. And I've named that image my two coal image. And if I want every single two column image in my project to have a box shadow, uh, if, if I created just a class that I have to go through the entire project and make sure that I add the right box shadow to that image and if I decide later that I want to change that box shadow to look different say I want it to be uh, small instead of medium or medium instead of small that I have to go back and find every single instance of that two column image throughout the entire project and that can get quite laborsome. And so one of the things that I found recently, and I'm just going to give a shout out to Timothy Ricks for this with his Lumos system. I don't use that system, but this is one of the things that he uses within his system that makes things really nice, his class attribute selector. And so all you need to do is you put your square bracket and you type in a class or just type the word class with an asterisk and then an equals. And now you're going to put the class that you want to select. And so in this particular instance, it's going to be 
uh, my a small box shadow and you can name this whatever you want you don't have to name it box whatever makes sense to you to me box small medium large those things made sense to me so box small and this is kind of goes with the system that i have in uh, my figma file then you're going to open up your curly brackets you're going to paste in css there and then you're going to close your curly brackets now anywhere in your project to it well let me just go ahead out of this so i'm going to save that i'm going to go that now i'm going to have right here my class location hero image so if i add and i just add dash dash just to show that this is something that is uh you know added to this particular class that is actually going to accomplish something and then i paste in box small so anywhere this word box small well, let me move that box small shows up a box shadow is going to be created so if you notice there's a box shadow that was created there if i take this off and i click enter that box shadow if you notice it it went away so we can make that a bit more noticeable and, and what i actually had on here was a box medium so dash dash box md which stands for my box medium and as soon as i click enter you're going to notice that that box shadow showed up on there this is just a really quick and easy way to add box shadows throughout your entire project and you notice that i've done that here um, if i click in to another well, let me find a better example here we go if i click into this image right here this is my section z text left image uh, and if i want to put a box shadow on this image dash dash box small now we're going to have a box shadow on that particular image right there and on every single image section z text left image every one of those in the entire project now box small has been added to that class and what that has done is it has added a box shadow to every single one of those images throughout my entire Webflow project. Now, if you don't want that to take place, then you need to make sure that, that you add this as a separate class um, onto, you know, right here, box small, and then you can remove it from here. You know and that box image is still going to be there because what that class selector is looking for is it's looking for the instance of box sm in any of the classes that is associated with your project so hopefully this helps you out this is an easy quick way to be able to add box shadows to your webflow project that are the exact same box shadow that is being utilized in your figma file and this hopefully speeds up your development and allows you to create one-to-one -one designs that you have spent time on in figma or you have got from a designer they're expecting you to do that in your webflow project if you got some value out of this video would you like it would you share it and if you want more videos like this subscribe to the channel hope to see you on the next one